me again hello viewers um i'm sitting about my garden the other side the other side of that hedge through that gate is my main garden and the house is about 45 yards 50 yards that way big garden as you can imagine that way is uh, the north sea marshes and a, and a river and uh yeah um this is my little hidey way from all the holiday makers and that because it's a silly season now. Um, it's the start of what I call the worst weekend of the year, which is Easter. When living around here, um, we get everybody up here. We've got people on holiday and uh, we've got all the second homers up and all the people like that. And uh, so we've got a double bubble really. And a huge amount of day trippers. I mean, although the weather's been pretty crap this morning, it got better this afternoon and uh, people are flooding in. Well I bought to Yarmouth today and that was absolutely packed in Yarmouth. Um, packed in Galston and uh, pretty busy in Lowy as well. So uh, all our stuff rather you local colloquialisms aren't there I think. But uh, there's a chap walking across there as a footpath runs along there and uh, literally just along here when you see them up because I'm down in the levee down on the marshes that's like a levee that runs along the side of the thing I just thought I'd mention I mean if you ever think about visiting Southwold um a few do's and don'ts really I mean from a local um it's very easy to get ripped off in this town um if you want to uh if you just come for a day or coming on a holiday one or two things to remind yourself of if it's Adnams in the in the uh, name or owned by a company called Adnams, which is the main brewery in the town, it's going to be expensive. And the quality is, the coffee's no better than anywhere else. I mean, the beer, if you like Adnams beer, fair enough. I got drunk on it really bad when I was 18. Um, and you know what it's like, if you get absolutely slaughtered on, on a drink, sometimes you go again, you don't like it. And the smell of the Adnams, it just makes me want to throw up. Um, but there are a lot of people, real ale drinkers, think it's a really nice beer they do make a bloody good gin though it's expensive but they do make a good gin um yeah the brewery is about uh i don't know 600 yards that way up near the church um you can't see the church from here but uh i can smell it sometimes on a southerly wind yeah um adnams uh um, so adnams southwold is basically an island uh one along the north side of the town is a river called bus creek that runs from the sea wall at the north to the north um which is north of the pier where the car park is all the way it's west um it's a bridge you go over when you come into the town um and it terminates at the harbour just up from the uh bailey bridge or the footbridge at the harbour um the uh and then you go into Warbleswick um and then you go down the harbour it's a river Blythe that separates um Southwold from Warbleswick well it doesn't actually because some of Southwold is the other side but we won't get into that dispute um basically yeah you've got the river Blythe that uh where the old mudflats are near the A12 go all the way down where it goes out to sea that is Southwold Harbour and then you got the sea so there's only one way in and out of the town by vehicle um and that is over the bridge uh and uh, there's three ways to get to that bridge from the other side of the river your turn, you know the visitor side of the river one is south off the a12 blytheborough one is uh from the west via wangford and the one is from the north via a village called rentham on the a12 but every, you have to come along the a12 any way you go on that one problem is if we get any flooding or anything or any roadworks we're kibosh because sometimes we'll only have one entrance into the town and uh, sometimes we have to have lights on the bridge which is always a good idea we but yeah so basically that's it now within that island there's around about just over 40 establishments that sell food and drink um ranging from sandwich shops that sell coffee um bakers that sell coffee and have a few tables up to very expensive restaurants like the sutherland house and places like that as far as expensive restaurants go, I don't go anywhere near them. They're, they're very pretentious. The middle classes love them. They, it's 50 quid a head, 100 pound a head. I, I ignore them. 
I'm more going to advise you where to go if you're on a tight budget. You're just a normal working person. You don't want to be spending 30, 40 quid a head on it meals. And you don't want to get ripped off. Unfortunately, yeah, well, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, the pier has changed hands. It's now been took over by a couple who live in a town. Well, they say they live in a town. They're basically Londoners who bought a house in a town, yeah. But they're probably ex hedge fund managers. They've just bought the pier and they're going to make it into this system. I'm just praying they don't make it into a bastion of the middle classes. Um, if they do that, they'll fuck it up. The pier is um, pretty good, actually. It's got a it's got a little amusement arcade, which is a bit crap on the 2P machines, but it's got some good machines in it. The restaurant itself is okay. It's reasonably good value for money. I mean, you can get a really nice burger, chips, and with coleslaw for around about 16 quid. Um, drinks are expensive, but not any, not ludicrously too. And it's a really nice setting. You sit there and you can look down the coast and up the coast because you're over the water. And next to that, there's a clock house. Um, just up the pier, there's a clock house coffee room, which is really nice. The only problem is, after COVID, they decided to keep the paper cups. And black coffee in a paper cup is not, you don't do that. So I used to, I take my own mug when I go down there. So I advise you, it's often a good idea to bring a small mug with you into, if you're a black coffee drinker, bring a small Americano sized mug because they water down the Americano criminally in this town. It's basically just one shot in a mug. You can't even taste it. It's brown water. You might as well, you might as well just piss in your cup. Um, so I always have a small cup and just say to them, can you put a double shot in there and fill it up with water? Yeah. Um, and that's about right then, you know. Um, but if you like lattes and that, you don't like coffee anyway, so it doesn't really matter for people like you. Um, yeah, so uh, the pier's not too bad. The kiosks are down the seafront on the prom. There's three. Well, there's four, actually. Um, starting from the pier end, there's a North Parade kiosk. Um, that's all right. Bake and roll and a, and a, and a, and a, and a free pack coffee, um, half decent coffee for, I don't know, four quid, four fifty. Um, and then you got Susie's, which is where all the hoi polloi go, where they have avocado and bacon rolls and shit like that. Um, that's okay, but that's where all the middle classes congregate. And, and then you go, um, and then you go down the, uh, down the bottom where, uh, Gun Hill Tea Room is, which is mostly, it's infested with dogs. Because that area, they can walk the dogs all year round. So if you don't like dogs, don't go to Dunhill Tea Room because it's just like dog city. But if you walk dog and you want to drink a coffee in the, in the, while you walk the dog, it's ideal. It gets very busy though in the, in the summer, spring. And then a bit further down, right down near the harbour, down near what they call the, the concrete jetty at the entrance of the harbour to the sea, there's a car park there and there's a little kiosk there. And they do very reasonable coffees, snacks and that. And you can sit round it in, on the benches. You've got Lou Cry across the road, so if you're like me, you've got the old prostate, bloody business. Um, that's a pretty good thing. And uh, yeah, it's a quiet area of the town, and it's right on the um, beginning of the harbour and down near the campsite. Um, and that's all right as well. Now, as far as in the town goes, I would steer clear of the pubs. Um, one of the pubs called the Red Lion at the moment is putting a 10% gratuity on the bill. It doesn't tell you until you actually go pay the bill. Um, I don't like that. I like to have the choice of I pay a gratuity and I'm not paying gratuity for ordering food. The food is ordinary at best. Um, about three quid a portion dearer than it should be. And then they stick 10% on top. And then they say to you at the bar or when you when the waiter has been the gum, you can remove it if you want. Well, you're not going to do that, are you? Because one, it's going to make embarrass her. It's going to embarrass you. And, you, and, you're gonna, and it's going to offend her because you're making out that her service was crap. When all it is, is you don't pay bloody tips. It's up to the business to pay them the correct wage, not me. <laughs> you know, I'm on just above minimum wage anyway, so what the fuck did I have to supplement people who are probably earning more money than me anyway? So that didn't go down very well. And there's a few establishments down the high street um, that add quite a lot if you eat in. So you might go into one. I can't really say too much because I don't want to bad mouth certain places on here, but we got a little sandwich shop and coffee house, which newly opened a couple of years ago. To start with, that was excellent. You just go in there, get a coffee, get your sandwich, eat it. My missus went in there the other day and had four coffees, cost her over 20 quid. And the reason being is they load it with um, uh, about 40% if you sit in and eat it. And sitting in isn't sitting at a table, it's sitting on a stool <laughs> with, a, with a plank of wood looking out the window. 
Um, so uh, they got greedy there, so we don't bother to use that anymore. A friend, another friend of mine actually came unstuck there as well. Um, they, uh, you know, and uh, so they're getting greedy. There's one or two like that. If, you know, they're pre-packed sandwiches or whatever. Buy them, take them out, sit on a bench and eat them. Don't eat them in the premises, you'll get hammered. Um, but to sit in and have a snack and a coffee, I would say... There's a little sweet shop halfway down the high street called Squires. Um, there's a little tea room at the back of that. I have a notice in the entrance to the doorway. That's well worth going in. It's very quaint and the food is good and it's good value. Um, Farmhouse Bakery, Nick, a little bit further up the street from there. They're very good, very good reasonably value. They'll make big baguettes to order, big sour salad baguettes. You can either eat them in with a cup of coffee or take them down the beach and eat them. Excellent. Um, but everywhere else, uh, there's a few other places. I mean, there's a, there's one or two chain places like the Tipsy Tea Rooms. Um, if you can get past Frau Obus, the bloody person who runs it, old bag. Um, and uh, really does, uh, she, I don't think she wants customers. She's so bloody, uh, um, grumpy. Either that or she bloody doesn't like men or whatever. I don't know. I never get very good experience with her. Um, yeah, there's one or two of them. There's a, there's a pasty place, which is like a Cornish pasty place, which is okay i mean the coffee's all right but the pasties are quite expensive um for what they are um it's a good place called fully loaded where you get loaded chips um a lot to eat um 15 quid 13 quid for a big hot dog and loads of chips i mean that's pretty good that gets very busy there you have to end up taking it as a takeaway the chippies there's two chippies in town um mark's chippy which is down in fact face is okay um i don't bother with it um, and as for the other one, uh, there's two. Uh, the other one is basically the same chippy. They got one. They got one in uh, um, in East Street, up near Colin and Clare, really expensive shop, um, and uh, one down the harbour. Um, they are. They do these posh refry three times chips. Basically, they just taste like uh, McCain oven chips. Um, they charge a fortune for them, put them in a pretty box, give you a slice of lemon and some pumpkin parsley, and charge you twice as much as what they're worth. And to be fair, they're crap. Um, and uh, people queue for hours for this shit, and it's not worth it. If you're going to come to Southwold, steer away from these places because you'll spend your whole day queuing. Keep away from them; they're just not even worth the fucking bother. Um, if you want a decent portion of chips, you check, it's easier to drive to bloody Kessel and up the coast and go at one of those two chippies. They're really nice there. And the same problem with Alba, a totally overrated chip shops and queues out on the Buckham Road, you know. Um, yeah, there's loads of better places than that. There's better places in Ray, Ray, Lay, uh, Layson and all these. So if you want fish and chips, you're better off to wait till the end of the day than on your way home, calling at Halesworth, Layston, or somewhere like that, or Kessenland, or Pakefield and Lowestoft and get your chips there. Far better. Far better. Um, yeah, I think that's about it, really. I mean, there's loads of other places, but they're either very expensive or very pretentious. Um, you know, so it's up to you to find out about them. I mean, I'm not really that bothered. So, uh, you know, um, the shops in the town are very expensive. The co-op is very expensive. Tesco's is. Um, Tesco's have about 10% of their stock is what I would call normal Tesco prices. The rest is jacked up because it's Southwold. Same with co-op. I mean, co-op prices are ridiculous. Um, and... Um, they have one or two cheaper things there, but you just got to look around the shelves until you find it, find a special office. If you've got one of the co-op blue co-op cards, that does work in co-op, and you can get some special offers on that. So that's worth remembering if you own one. And uh, uh, But that's about it, really. I mean, uh, there's a... Um, that's about... Yeah, there's, uh, that's it, really. I mean, out of all the places, the ones I've mentioned are probably your best bet. Um, if you're staying here, don't. I'll give you a word of advice. Stay and drive in. There's loads of places to park. It's four quid a day to park. Yeah, five quid a day. It's cheaper to stay at a nice cottage in the country, 20, 10, minute, 10 minute drive, 15 minute drive away. Say at Wangford, Rentham, somewhere like that. But to stay in the town, one, you can't park. You'll end up parking miles from your bloody house. Um, and uh, the prices are just ridiculous. There's a cottage, there's a house just opposite where I live. I mean, I live in a council house. I mean, this is the council estate where I am. I mean, they're all well ex council houses. The one opposite me, they, they charge 1800 quid a week off peak for that. 
And the one there's one there's a five bedroom one a bit further up. They charge four grand in the summer for a week. Don't bother. It's not worth it. You're far better off either go to Lower, stay in Lower Stoft, or get, go to one of the caravan parks. You know, there's a really good one at a park, Dean, one at, at, um, at, uh, at uh, Kessenden. There's a park holidays one at, called Carlton Mere at Saxmunda. That's a lovely little park, that is. Off peak, I mean, this time of year, you get a caravan for four days, 120 quid. Stay there and then just drive in. If you want to see Southwold, Alba, any of these, just drive in, park, come in fairly early, get here before about 9.30, park, pay the day ticket, but park in the car park, Bring your walking crews and everything like that and you'll have a really enjoyable day. Yeah, but don't stay here. It's not worth it. The beach gets crammed in the summer. Um, you can't bloody move. I mean, I don't near the beach in the summer. If I want to go swimming to the sea, I piss off to Lowestoft or somewhere, yeah? So at least the beaches, you know. There's too many dogs about here as well. You know, everywhere's bloody dogs, you know. And, um, yeah, so I'm not really a good advert for this town, but I would say save your money. Don't go on Airbnb or any of these. Save your money. Just stay within a 10 mile drive. Oh, and if you've got an EV, don't bother. There's no way to charge. And if you put your lead across the pavement, you will get you will get slaughtered by the locals because we don't like it when people get charged with their cars by putting it over the thing. I'll bang on your bloody door and turn it on plug. All right? Because you shouldn't be doing that anyway. And uh, there's a lot of elderly people about here and we don't want your bloody leads going across the thing. I have noticed one thing though, when they come up from London, because there's a total lack of um, chargers around here, there's one fast charger about 10 miles away, nine times out of 10, that don't work. Um, and uh, uh, I, uh, we've got a couple of sort of like seven kilowatt ones, but normally a, a normal petrol or diesel cars parked on them because people just double yellow park here, don't give a shit, they just pay the fines. Um, but there's, um, Oh, they often come here for the week and their cars don't move because they dare and they've got range anxiety so they're basically stuck here for the week or they come in two cars and they use a the petrol car while they're here and leave the tesla or whatever just sitting there yeah i see it all the time there's a there's a vw id3 or whatever it is up here uh, up, up the road here that's been here a fortnight that woman hasn't moved i know she didn't move because there's a coke can laying behind her wheel and um, that's still exactly the same place as it's been for the last fortnight because somebody threw it on the floor and that rolled under her car so yeah that's basically it really so if you're coming here for a holiday don't stay here stay within a 10 mile radius at one of the caravan parks or find a little cottage somewhere or, or something um, or camping campsites always packed though go to a campsite there's a good one in Raiden a really good one at Raiden can't remember what it's called now um, but the uh, back end of Raiden, that's a good one. You'll probably find it on any campsite thing because it's quite professional. Um, if you're visiting for the day and you've got, you're like me, you're just a normal working person. If you sort of use where I told you to go, you'll be out, it'll be about right. You know, you'll be a maximum for lunch. You'll be spending somewhere between 10 and 20 quid each. Um, just be careful um, because they don't put a lot of prices out there. And until you get in there and sat down, that's when you get the shock. And then that's embarrassing because you have to get up and leave. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so at the end of the day, it's... Uh, oh, yeah, you can get takeaway coffees in Magpie's Bakery, um, Black Olive uh, Delicantessen, um, the Co-op. Just go in there and get takeaway and just go and sit on the, on the seafront. Um, and you can get takeaway coffees at all the, all the restaurants and what have you. So, uh, you know, yeah, you can get a takeaway and just go and sit down, you know, if you don't mind it in a paper cup or whatever. Right, I'm going to shoot, because um, uh, I want my tea and it's getting on. I did 42 miles on the old electric bike today and I'm feeling a bit, uh, well not tired, but my legs have felt it a bit today, I don't know why. I think it's because I was sort of getting along fairly. Okay, till next time. Oh yeah, and don't forget, to forget to, don't forget to subscribe and put a few likes as well. I'm gradually, uh, it's going up gradually, but... Uh, I'm going to start trying to put a few more videos on here, you know, I mean, I, I mean, if you find them interesting, you find them interesting, but, uh, you know, but it visits Southall, it's a lovely place, but um, look it up online, but just be careful, it's easy to get ripped off, it's easy to come here and spend 150 quid and think where the hell did that all go, you know, till next time.